Welcome back to Life as God Intended, to part two of our series on the subject of God-given desires and flesh patterns of sin. As you know, in the last broadcast, we defined what God-given desires are. Now we'll explore how these desires can become distorted when we seek to satisfy them apart from God. As we walk through this process, we'll begin to uncover how the flesh works in our lives and leads us away from God's original design. If you haven't watched part one, I encourage you to go back and watch it first before you watch this video. What the flesh is and what it's not. Let's start with what the flesh is not. The flesh is not related to our spiritual condition or spiritual nature as it's sometimes referred to. It's not the same as spiritual depravity. It's, it's not some intrinsic evil part within us. And the flesh is not eradicated at conversion, and it doesn't improve over time. <laughs> so let me give some illustration for clarity. I want you to think of a mirror covered with dust. The mirror itself isn't broken or evil, but the dust prevents it from reflecting the image clearly. In the same way, the flesh, the selfish and sinful patterns in our soul, distorts the reflection of God's image in our behavior. You see, spiritual conversion is a radical internal exchange of our spiritual condition or nature but it doesn't remove the fleshly desires from our soul that have accumulated over the years. These desires remain, inclining us to act in ways that contradict our new identity in Christ when the tempter lures us to misrepresent who we are in Christ. These fleshly tendencies are not an old nature or an old man, but rather old patterns of behavior. These old patterns of behavior still are on file as they were in our minds even though they have no legitimate power over us as Christians, unless, of course, we allow the tempter to influence our actions. Conversion initiates a radical spiritual exchange in our lives. But the process of sanctification is an ongoing work of cleaning the mirror, as it were, and that's the work of the Spirit. The flesh continues to be revealed as we allow God to sanctify our souls and cleanse us, as it were, allowing the Spirit greater control over our lives, over our souls, enabling us to walk by the Spirit rather than after the flesh. Let's define the flesh now. The flesh is defined as the way I have learned to manage and operate my life apart from God under the deception of Satan expressing his sinful character. Let me illustrate that with a window of understanding. The flesh is like a self-built fortress. Now, it's really not built by us as much as us being influenced by the deceiver, but we think that we are independent selves, even though we're not. 
And over time, we have built walls of self-reliance, trying to manage life in our own strength. We've all done it, haven't we? And these walls block us from experiencing God's best. Satan deceives us into believing that our ways of managing life are better than God's design. The Greek word for flesh is sarx, S-A-R-X, which refers to behavior tied to the psychological function of the soul. That's very important. When we're talking about flesh patterning, we're talking about distorted desires in the soul. Do not confuse that with your spiritual identity in the human spirit. Let me give you an illustration. Picture the soul as a control room where decisions are made based on our desires, because that's basically what the soul is, the mind, the emotion, and the will. And when the control room is surrendered to God, our desires are aligned with his will. But when we take control, or at least we think we take control, we're being deceived. <laughs> when we take control apart from God, the flesh takes over and, the, and begins running the control room. Now again, there's nothing personified about the flesh. I don't want to misrepresent what the flesh is. We're trying to bring clarification. So it's Satan tempting us through these old pattern propensities, giving us the illusion that these patterns in the control room of selfish behavior are really our desires, where they're really not our desires. They're influenced by Satan's temptation. And because we feel them and we think them, we think it's just us on our own. And so the flesh refers to how desires become patterned toward selfishness and sinfulness. Let's talk about another window of understanding. The flesh operates like a broken compass. It still points to desires, but instead of pointing us in God's direction, it points us toward selfishness and sin. The compass is meant to guide us, but it has been distorted by living apart from God. How do these desires, these God-given desires, become fleshly patterns? Well, over time, these God-given desires are distorted by life's experiences, becoming patterns of selfish action and reaction. And some of these patterns become deeply ingrained, leading to addiction, to obsession, or compulsive behaviors, often being referred to as besetting sins or strongholds of sin. Let me illustrate it like this. A path through a forest. Imagine walking through a forest and taking the same route every time as you go through the forest. What happens? Over time, a path is worn into the ground, making it easier to walk that route. Our fleshly patterns are like that path. They are habits we form by consistently walking away from God's design. And the longer that we walk those fleshly paths, the deeper they become, making it harder to change direction. In conclusion, in this second part, we've explored how desires, when pursued apart from God, become flesh patterns, ways that we've learned to manage life independently of Him. And these flesh patterns 
are like well-worn paths that have led us into selfish actions and reactions. But there's hope. In the next video, we'll look at how this plays out in the Christian life and where the battle between flesh and spirit takes place. Be sure to join me for part three, where we'll dive deeper into this ongoing conflict. But until then, may I call you to action. Reflect. Are there areas in your life where you recognize some of these flesh patterns of selfish action? Well, take some time to ask the Lord to not only reveal them to you, but to reveal why you have a tendency to continue to give yourself to them. And in the next video, we'll discuss how these flesh patterns affect the daily walk of a Christian and how the Spirit of God gives us the power to overcome. Thanks so much for watching this broadcast and sharing it with those that you think it might be a benefit. And until next time, may you experience life as God intended.